What's happening there, everybody? Welcome back to World of Warships with Tuffy the Great. So, patch 0.5.9 came out, and I finally got it downloaded on my very, very slow internet. And one of the things that the patch is going to introduce is it introduces German battleships. Now, we've always had German cruisers in, uh, in the lineup. Um, they've been there for a couple of months. So, for example, here is the Königsberg. You... Um, yes, I do have a couple of different cruisers, and I am just total rubbish with them. But, you know, maybe one of these days, in an attempt to spark variety, I will uh, put, up a, put up a cruiser video just to, just to show you what they're capable of. Because they are fun little ships to play. I, I'm just total, total garbage. So, here is my pride and joy, the Turpets, or as some people like to call it, the Derpets. <laughs> Um, so we'll go up in here into the tech tree, and of course here you can see all the German cruisers. There's the Königsberg, and then the next ship that we have to unlock, which is the Nuremberg. But they've got uh, all the German battleships, and they all say soon on them. So uh, when I was on the test server, because I belong to uh, the group that's allowed to test new patches for Wargaming, um, which is the company that makes World of Warships and World of Tanks, um, even then we couldn't test the German battleships, so they all just say soon. So there's a later patch that's coming um, that we we will get that allow us to finally unlock the German battleships. And they're just, I, I'm really excited about this because they're such good looking ships. So you start off with the Tier 3 Nassau. Um, which is an older, older, older German battleship. Of course, there's really no info on it, and I, I didn't have time to um, Google anything on the Nassau and the different German battleships, but I, I know that this is a World War I era battleship for the Germans. Um, so one of the things that you'll notice, it kind of switches up from my other battleships, is that it actually has four guns on each side. So it's got six total guns, the forward gun and then the aft gun here, but it's also got these giant swinging guns, these swivel guns here, that, that point out to the, to the different sides. So unlike ships of its day, where they just put them right down the middle, um, even made the ships bigger and longer so that they could fit like a turret in between the, the funnel and uh, aft mast, the Germans just stuck them on the sides. So, I mean, it's kind of a cool ship. And then we go to the Tier 4 Kaiser battleship, which is the next battleship. Same kind of concept, whereas this one's only got three guns. But the guns are bigger. Much bigger. So you're being able to still point four guns down the side of the ship. But it's they're, they're a bit bigger guns. And it's starting to get that, like, battleship look to it. So the Koenig is the Tier 5 battleship, still very World War II, but it was a heavy battleship. You can see the battleships are getting bigger, and there it is, the turret in between the two superstructures there, um, rather than having them stuck on the side. And then if you look at the secondary armament here, you can just see there's tons of it. And then the Tier 6 Bayern is the next ship in the line. Um, still has only four guns, but they've enclosed the superstructure. They made the ship a bit shorter, and they've gotten rid of that fifth turret in in the middle um, so it's still a very cool ship I'm still very very excited about it and then um, then Jensenau is the tier 7 German battleship um, this was actually a World War II battleship you can see it has that German battleship feel it looks very very much like the Tirpitz um, whereas the Tirpitz has two guns aft this one only has one and then of course at tier 8 the world famous sister ship to the Turpets, the Bismarck. So this is one I'm very excited to get my hands on. Um, I uh, I love it when they stick um, famous historical ships in this game, like the Iowa, like the Turpets, like uh, the Arizona, um, because it's just I am a little bit of a, a collector, I guess you could say. So the Turpets has is actually a little bit better of a ship than its sister ship was, um, at least on paper here. So it'll be exciting to, to get that little guy unlocked and uh, go from there. Um, this is the Tier 9 ship, the uh, F de Grobe. Groby, Gross, ah, Gross, it's a Sharfus S right there. Right there, that's the Sharfus S. Um, Still, the guns are still the same size as the Turpets and the Bismarck. So the ships kept getting faster and they kept getting more maneuverable. But they, they had the, the same armament as their, their brethren. So uh, maybe you're going to get... I mean, and I can't pull up any of the stats in-game. So I have no idea 
what this ship is like. Nobody has ever played it before. Um, if you YouTube um, reviews on the German battleship line, it's just basically gamers doing what I'm doing now, just going down the line and giving their impressions on the battleship. Nobody has played them. Nobody knows what they're like in battle. But you can see that the ship is getting bigger. Um, this is actually a very good looking ship. I just I do love the German battleship line. Um, I think that they're just ridiculously good ships. So if we go one step up from Tier 9 here, and we go to the Tier 10 Crewfest. Crew first. Crew first? Yeah. So the guns aren't any bigger, but there's more of them. So instead of having two barrels per turret, you now have three. So instead of hypothetically only firing eight guns, you can see here that we are now firing 12 guns. Um, the secondary armament has gotten bigger, and this this was probably, I, I, I don't know the history behind this ship, and again, I haven't had time to Google anything, but I'm going to assume that this was a Montana-style ship, that this was something that was put into a hypothetical plan that the Germans were building, and maybe even so far went to uh, lay down the keel, um, but never got a chance to finish. Um, so... I mean, it's a good-looking ship, so, you know, here's to hoping probably in the next month or two months, hopefully we'll get something down the line that allows us to play with the German battleship lines and start unlocking these guys. Um, I love how everything's in German, too. Grosser, which is German for bigger. Yeah, bigger. So the Grosser Kruzast, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to the Tirpitz, and in celebration of... The German battleship line coming in, we're going to actually run a battle with the Tirpitz, so let's jump in. So here we are in my Tirpitz. We're going to do a domination battle. Um, this one starts us off with two points already. We have C, the enemy has B, and so we're going to take the Tirpitz out, and gosh darn it, if we aren't going to try to win this thing. And uh, we have uh, two carriers in this, in this uh, battle here. You can see there Captain Taco in the Lexington and Jirai Knight in another Lexington. So yeah. General quarters. So let's do this here. Let's I think we're gonna bring our guns over this way and we are going to go towards A. That just looks more battleship friendly over oh, there's some good islands to hide behind especially with the turpits with as fast and maneuverable it is and uh, having torpedoes I think that we can sneak out and ambush a ship or two oh, New Orleans it's a good little cruiser tier 8 US cruiser there alright straighten this puppy out I was actually talking the other day with a good friend of mine that I play naval action. Oh, no. Bad guys. Bad guys. Um, that I play naval action with. Naval action is an Age of Sail combat simulator. But it has a, a huge open world... Um, ooh, North Kekalaki. A hipper. Oh, nope, he's gone. Um, and I always... We were always talking about how cool would that be if somebody created like a World War II... You know, where you could join a side, Germans, Japanese, U.S., and uh, sail around like a huge open world and encounter other players and, um, you know, go to, go to battle with them, kind of an all uh, a la naval action. I always thought that would be kind of cool, especially, you know, because this game is so, so darn pretty. Oh, the Oboa over there is already having some problems. Oba. Looks like he, uh, oh good, they're going for A too. Uh, I'm going to hit that building. I'm going to hit that mountain. Patoosh, not one of them gets over. All right. So you can see that Captain Taco Ninja there in chat, he's our, he's our aircraft carrier. Um, he is coordinating with other players, which is something you don't 
ever see really with World of Warship players, especially the aircraft carrier. They don't care about other players. They're just out to get kills for themselves. They're not there to cover. And this guy is actually, oh my God, is he going to turn into my shots? Yeah, he did. Awesome. Um, you know, this guy is actually trying to cover us, which is which is kind of weird for me. That's a new experience, so I'm still I'm still kind of getting used to it. We should target the Amabi, the Amagi here. We'll target this uh, Japanese battleship, the Amagi. He doesn't look like he wants to live anymore anyway. Oh, well, those are probably going to miss because he's kind of headed away from me and I didn't fire high enough. Oh, those might actually hit him. Yep, got him. I kind of clipped him. I don't, know, I, I don't know. To say that I got him is pretty loose relative term. So what's the Amagi doing here? Wait for my rear guns to reload. There we go. Shots out. Achtung! The Japanese are here. One hit. Yeah, you notice the real difference between my Turpets and my North Carolina is that the North Carolina shot dispersion is just ridiculous. Um, and honestly, I really have no idea why that is. I really don't. So if World War II had gone a different way, the Germans and the, J the Americans against uh, the Japanese here. So that's, that's how we're playing this. Oh, no, I slammed into that island. Okay. So that's how we're playing this. You see we got a Nuremberg, a Colorado, a North Carolina. Oh, there's a Japanese ship. He's a defector, though. Um, yeah, the Otago, he, he's a defector. <laughs> uh, so funny. If World War II had been different. My history professor from college is probably dying laughing at this concept. Oh, look at him. He's going to turn right into me. He's going to show me that broadside, that beautiful Sexy broadside, as Jingles would say. That's a paddling. Enemy cruiser sunk. So next up, we're going to go with the Amagi. See what we can, what kind of damage we can do to him as we sail in between these different islands. Let's just sit back and let this happen. Now that they've lost this point, lost total control, they're running away.
so this Amagi thinks that he is going to run away and shoot at me. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Let's get around the side of this. Because see what's happened here is you can see my whole team is right here. None of them are moving up. None of them are advancing. They are just sitting there like little wimps. They are scared to move. They don't want to get shot because getting shot is super duper icky. Um, and so this is what your team generally does is they just they just sit there. Um, they won't push forward. They won't move into cap circles. They won't go the extra distance. They won't do anything extraordinary. They will just hang out in the back. So let's see if we can park a shot or two on this Colorado. I think I'm a little too high there. I might hit a superstructure, but I think I'm pretty dead on with my aim. Nope, nope. Didn't hit a darn thing. Now remember that Amagi is still hanging out around here. So, remember that, everybody. We're going to push this uh, northern flank and see, there he is, um, and see what we can come up with. Oh man, that's a fast little ship, isn't it, for a battleship? The Japanese sure did a good job with their battleships. Oh, Citadel Pen. That's right. Turpets coming for you, son. Coming for you. We're going to take a shot or two at this Colorado, too. Because he has made me mad. He made me miss. All right. And this is what I love about the Turpets. Do you see how quickly I am firing? Between my front and my back turrets, this is how quickly I'm turning. I, I'm shooting at these guys. Got a cruiser shooting at him, but the only one that's going to really do any damage to him is me. He's turned broadside on in an attempt to hit that cruiser. So, as Jingles would say, folks, that's a paddling. Focus our attention here on this Amagi. See, what he's doing is he's running and he's being smart. He's shooting at me with his rear turret. Yes, I can only he can only shoot at me with a couple of turrets, but he's a lot harder to hit. Um, and if I do hit with the dispersion that's ridiculously on my guns, what's going to end up happening is he is going to... Uh, I'm only going to hit him with like one, maybe two shots. I, I'm not really going to peg him that much. So, yeah. I'm going to see. I wonder if I can get in range. That Colorado was almost kind of, sort of, maybe in range. What's the Otago doing? Pew, hope he lit me on fire. This kind of goes against my naval code. Um, I don't normally go broadside on to a North Carolina, but I'm kind of going to this time, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to get this guy within torpedo range. The North Carolina has an awful torpedo belt. So I'm going to get that North Carolina in torpedo range. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to lock my armament so that they can be swung around and focused by the time I nail this North Carolina. But i got to get in close. That's the thing. I've got to get in close to this North Carolina to hit him with my torpedoes. See that Amagi is running behind that island. He's not really even shooting at me anymore. Torpedoes to port. Crap. The ship is on fire. We're holding all the water lines. We're shooting quickly to that area. This battle went 
a little farther south than I wanted it to. <laughs> you can see. Oh, that's terrible. Because now I have to deal with these really big guns on that North Carolina, and I have to deal with flooding, and I have to deal with, uh, and my torpedoes are also going to miss for anybody that's interested. But a lot of that has to do with the fact that, there we go, boom! God, that was such a great game up until that moment. Um, but we saw a ton of our enemy team, or our team, they took another point from us, so this is going to be a, this is going to be a losing battle. Um, there's, there's no way to get around that. So, you know, even our destroyer, yep, this is the quality of teammate stuck on an island, facing down an Amagi battleship, who a few minutes ago was running in terror from us. And, yep, that's what he gets. That's what he gets. So now we got a North Carolina and an Otago that are trying to cap, but they're outgunned by a New Mexico and a Arizona. And you guys have seen my um, Arizona videos. And look at that New Mexico dodging torpedoes like a champ. And this Arizona is just going to tear um, this Arizona and this New Mexico. I don't know what he's doing. He's switching his guns back and forth. Um, which is literally the dumbest thing I've ever seen. He is just sitting there. He's not moving. He's not. The the New North Carolina has a higher gun traversal than both of those ships combined. So to get around the back and force them to turn their guns all the way around, whatever. So we were defeated. Um, the enemy team won. I was destroyed by that Amagi. He was the lucky little fella to kill uh, steel, kill steel from that North Carolina that I was facing off against. You know, that's just what happens when you don't have situational awareness. I was so focused on torpedoing that stupid North Carolina that I did not notice that my entire team around me had been killed. And before I knew it, I was alone facing a Tier 8 American battleship and a Tier 7 Japanese battleship. So, lessons learned, folks. Lessons learned there. So, hey... That's it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that game. Um, 134,000 credits, 1,000 uh, free XP, and 52 um, premium XP. So I hope you guys enjoyed that game. And if you liked what you saw, give the video a like, give the channel a subscribe, and as always, take care, folks.